Well, if I'm being honest, I was going to do a suit, white shirt, some blood here and there, but didn't have any white shirts I was able to really be in the market to ruin right now, and I, I felt like, uh, you know, I got infected right here. So anyway, we have uh, Train to Busan. Okay, so first of all, to any of you who are more accustomed to seeing me do movie reviews because you're not big into video games and all that, I'm sorry that it's taken so long, but with this whole quarantine bit and just business and video games and other excuses, it's taken me a while to do this. And plus, I usually do movie reviews when movies are coming out, and that usually gives me more incentive to do it. But I did say at one point that if anybody had any requests, that I would be taking said requests and doing reviews for them. So there is a small list, and I promise I am working down through that list. This is me here. Please, as well, be sure you're quarantined, stay inside, safe and sound, uh, unless you have an essential job, in which case, well, don't have much of a choice, do we? <laughs> now, I didn't see this when it first came out, but after a little bit of nagging from a familial constituent, I, <laughs> I ended up watching it. Now, I, the first time I saw this was some years back, because this movie's been out for about four-ish years almost now. I believe the first time I saw this was about two years ago or so, but I wanted to make sure that I had a fresh perspective before going into the review for this, and so I thought, well, I want to re-watch it first, and then be able to give any updated, present uh, thoughts on it, and be able to actually honestly review it as if it was a movie I had just seen. And I gotta say, I'm very glad that I did that. So from the start, Train to Busan is basically this whole, all you need to know, it's a foreign film, a uh, zombie movie, and it is all on a train. And yeah, zombie affection's going on. There's people on a train as it happens. It's nothing too crazy new in the zombie film genre, but it does a really good job going building off of this one idea and then making surprisingly realistic and likely scenarios from this idea and goes forward through there granted all in the likelihood of you know an actual infected infection outbreak because it seems more like an infection than zombies but i digress that point i really actually enjoyed dream of busan i wasn't sure if i was going to or not and I think I had a lower opinion of it when I first saw it for some reason, but seeing it again, it's a movie that can evoke, you know, like eerie scenes, uh, suspense, chills, horror, some bits of comedy and re comedic relief sprinkled throughout, but with overall great performances, it's uh, a really well done film, actually. Just kind of tidbits of information about the film before getting into my personal review. Just a little cursory glance, mind you. Directed by Yon Sein Ho, who. He's done other things, that, but none that have really caught fire in America, so to speak. His most recent film that he's done, as of like right now, is another live-action film called Psychokinesis, which is supposed to be like this comedy, action, sci-fi. I haven't seen it yet, but it looks promising, so there's that. Um, the cast list is... There's too many notes to make here, but overall, the arching thing is that everybody in this film does a great job, like, in terms of evoking all parts of who their characters are supposed to portray, which for this film, the, granted, the, the main lead that I will point out, who he's the guy that spearheads the whole thing as the primary, well, the primary protagonist, you'd overall say, but that's going to be Gon Yu, and he does a great job of giving us a very uh, good well acted and it seems like a well deserved character arc you watch the film uh, you'll see what I mean but of course everybody else did a great job the daughter the other train goer passengers and all that that are thrust in the situation it felt like all the characters in the movie kind of bring all the different forms of humanity to this life or death literally life or death situation and kind of show both the good the the, the middle ground the cowards the, the, the brave uh St stubborn steadfast heroes the evil or rather 
the even more so evil through cowardice. There's a lot going on in this movie, okay? But character-wise, everybody comes together. Great cast, they do a good job. It is better than your average zombie flick, I thought, because I've seen some fantastic, like, infected and zombie movies, and I've seen some really shitty ones, and this one isn't even middle of the road. It's, like, an actually well-done, um, infected zombie film that got some traction in the U.S., and then a lot of Am a lot more Americans started watching it uh, when it came out, but it was just a well-done film overall. The effects, I want to say they're bad, but if you, they all hold up pretty well. They all hold up pretty well. But if you look close enough, you start to notice, especially when some scenes have a heavy visual effect. Uh, hard to put into words, but I'm saying if you're, if you're someone who's been watching film and television for a while and you can spot the difference between like, you know, for example, somebody being stabbed and you're actually seeing real blood come out or somebody being slashed or stabbed and you see that little spritz of like CGI blood, you know? Not to say this movie does that, but I'm saying you would be well-versed enough to spot the difference. And in this movie, between the visual effects that we're used to for our Hollywood films and all that, maybe Busan was just working on a certain budget, which is believable because limited locations, believe it or not, so I could understand why digital was the way to go. But you know what? Overall, it holds up pretty well even four years later. The one, see, the, the only detracting parts about all this is that, and, and these are these are small gripes, but they're fairly, I, so my, my main gripes were the visual effects here and there. You could tell that they were kind of spotty, but not so much that it detracts my overall enjoyment, just enough to be noticeable and kind of bug me a little bit. I mean, it's been out for four years. I'm not gonna spoil the end, but I will, spoil the tone of the end so skip ahead to the this mark here if you don't want me to say anything like that this film doesn't exactly have what you'd call a good happy ending it's more like a hopeful ending but i mean kind of what do you expect in a movie like this it's it's horror but end of the day in a lot of horror films true to its title and what it impl what it implicitly implies <laughs> redundant what it implies is that there's going to be a lot of tragedy usually a lot of death i'm just saying don't get attached to any characters in this movie too long i'm just saying that but overall it's still filmed and directed well like all the action and all the shots in this film like you can always tell what is going on and i always harp on that as like a very key important fact of a movie so many action movies or even horror movies will have certain shots especially if it's like chaotic or I mean, especially if it's like chaotic or intense or violent, it'll be kind of like chopped up, shaking camera going on everywhere, a lot of quick cuts. And bottom line is you can never quite tell what's going on. And when you're confusing your audience and all of this, you're detracting from the enjoyment and the intensity or adrenaline that they could be investing in it. So to say that this film has zombies that are infected, zombies infected, that are running around crazy and getting these World War Z piles coming at you and going from train car to train car and trying to get out of there and beat them down and all that, but you can still clearly, like, see what all is going on. I mean, that says a lot about the film and the director, and that's very admirable, to say the least. For as smart as this movie is, there are certain decisions that are questionable by the characters, just certain... Like, even if you're a bad guy and you're an asshole, like, you think that you, you'd have logic and put two and two together in certain scenarios and not be so carefree with your evil deeds. So there's a few few very select moments where I'm just like, um, maybe human beings wouldn't have done that. But, again, these are, these are it's really just a bunch of, like, small, low-tier gripes that kind of form together to have enough on a plate to put forward and say, here are the issues that I had with the movie. But overall, it's a great movie. I don't know if you've seen it or not, but go for it. I'd say overall for like a final rating, honestly, uh, Train to Basan, which is one of the films that's been requested that I review that came out in 2016, I would give a very solid four out of five. It's definitely a film worth checking out. It's on Netflix still. It's been on Netflix for hell for years honestly and with the quarantine going on not only is it thematically relevant but it's just relevant to check it out as a uh, as a film now if you're not into horror or zombie slash infected films then it's not going to be your cup of tea skip this one but because this is only for people that are like a fan of horror action zombie slash infected in a movie all together 
I just love the idea. I'm always a fan of, uh, I guess, train-themed movies because I enjoyed Murder on the Orient Express, but I love Snowpiercer as just a couple examples. So, I don't know. It's a creative idea to place your main characters in the situation where the outbreak happens and how they introduce the outbreak to the train as well is just on that cusp of believable. That you you watch it again, that'll it'll make sense. But I don't want to spoil it too much. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. It's definitely worth your time. Hell, I would even be willing to buy it on Blu-ray and like show friends at parties and whatnot. It's a good one to kind of. It's a good one to spread it to your other Amer- American friends, yes, and like show people because it's definitely worth your time. That's about it. So, like I said, I'm sorry for the delays in getting these out between the quarantine and all the... I know I've been doing a lot of, like, streaming and video game uploads and all that, and that's not everybody's cup of tea, but it's a lot easier to do video games when you're quarantined and to stream and all that than it is to try to, I guess, allocate time to be able to film these reviews in the midst of what's going on, but I'm definitely trying to get them out, so... Apologies for the delay. I promised it would be an eventuality, and here I am. Here's the first one on the list. Yes, I am going to be tackling other films in this list. And yes, for a a certain someone out there that I know is watching this for a fact, yes, I will be watching that next. I promised that I would. I'm a man of my word. The next review will be for another foreign film. And yes, you, you know who I'm talking about, you. It's going to be for that film. Like I said, it would be. So, patience is a virtue, and ain't it grand. So thank you very much for watching. I appreciate the support as always. That was my review for Train to Busan. What did you think? Did you think it was overrated? Did you think it was a shitty zombie flick? Comment below. Disagree with me. Argue. Tell me I'm stupid. Or just dislike the video if you don't like me and my face or this cool Last of Us shirt that I'm wearing. Which, you know, if you don't, then well, fuck you. But I digress. Thank you so much for the support. Subscribe, ring the bell for more updates and content as it comes out. Otherwise, feel free to comment below with a movie you want me to review as well in the future. And stay tuned for the next movie review that I do. And goodbye, travelers.